This article reflects on the various methods I used to create a digital monograph as well as the rationales behind those methods. While it seems like a linear argument moving from the top of the page to the bottom, it's actually designed to be explored non-linearly. After discussing the organization of the site, I'll offer some suggestions for nonlinear approaches. This page is divided into six major sections, Introduction, Timeline, Practices, General Recommendations, Conclusions, and Works Cited. You are currently in the Introduction section, which offers an overview of the site, some background on the digital monograph, and a rationale slide that explains the reasons behind my practices. You can access these other slides by using the left or right arrows. If a slide is ever too long for your screen, you can scroll down using the mouse. While this site is functional on mobile devices, it runs much more cleanly on a larger screen. Pressing the down arrow from this slide brings you to the timeline section. This is the longest section of the article, detailing each of the major steps I took in making my digital monograph. It contains seven subsections, most of which include multiple slides that can be explored with the left or right arrows. Pedagogy relates how I learned drawing and software skills. From dissertation to monograph, explains the unique problems a digital monograph creates for authors shopping a book proposal. Preparation covers the steps immediately after getting an advanced contract. Composing includes what most would consider the bulk of the writing process, drafting, revising, and planning the digital format. Converting discusses how I turned my written documents into a website. Working with the press involves waiting and revising based on reviewer feedback. Final steps includes technical edits, accessibility, and copy editing. The practices section enumerates the various techniques that I employed throughout the timeline from coding to drawing to sustainability. It is divided into four subsections. Designing covers the planning process for a long multimodal project. Scripting offers some examples of how to write for a complex, nonlinear, visually intensive project. Digitizing discusses the tools I used to create the website along with things I learned that are not tool specific. Revising explores the unique opportunities and constraints created by revision in long multimodal projects. The general recommendation section distills all of the timeline and practices into a bulleted list of 15 suggestions for scholars doing similar work. Each of the suggestions links back to a slide on which the suggestion is more thoroughly discussed. Conclusions offers brief thoughts on future research. This may seem complex, so let me offer some suggestions on where to start. I would recommend all readers begin in the introduction to get the context of the monograph. A casual reader might then jump to the general recommendations. These recommendations are terse and direct, and thus are more interesting than the list of every step found in the timeline. In addition, they link back to slides from the practices and timeline sections. A reader more interested in creating their own digital project might read through the practices section first. The practices section links back to slides from the timeline section, and those can act as footnotes, offering more context for the practices. A committed reader could read through the entire thing linearly and gain a great deal, as each section builds on the one before it. But the best reader will explore based on their own needs. From this slide, you can move right to the overview slide, which offers much of this information again, but in textual form. For those who prefer reading, including those who skip videos entirely.